There's that, which I don't remember from the original. Uh, I think it was just like uh, the Huns were the original enemy in Mulan. To defeat the Huns. 95 episodes in and I have not reviewed an animated movie. This ain't gonna be the week. We're talking about Mulan on this week's Everyman Movie Review. Thank you for joining me for yet another episode of the Everyman Movie Review. I'm going to kind of give you a little behind the scenes, a little inside baseball, if you will. Uh, I have been trying to finish a short film screenplay that has been kind of in my mind for the last few weeks, so I cheated just a little bit. I actually recorded a few episodes ahead so that I could have most of the month of September to write. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize, but I'm doing a daily podcast, and that takes a lot of work. Doing two a week episodes of Every Man Movie Review, a lot of work. Doing my weekly podcast with my buddy Corey, a lot of work. I just don't have a lot of time to sit down and focus on writing, so I figured if I got a little ahead, I could go ahead and do that. And then, of course, Mulan came out and was live on Disney+, Plus, and we went and watched it last week. So I felt like I needed to interject a little bit and uh, give you a review of Mulan, the live action version that's out on Disney+. Plus. So you're going to have to ignore the actual numbers on the episodes for the next few weeks. I'm going to just throw this in whenever it's ready and it'll kind of mess up the order. But if you're a patron of mine on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Robert and Cheek, just know that I'm doing this so I can share with you a short film script that I'm working on and hoping to shoot next year. So Mulan, I saw a lot of people upset about this movie and I'm thinking that's because they were expecting a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the animated movie. Why? I'm not so sure. But before we get too far into it, let's get through the pleasantry, shall we? Mulan was directed by Nick Caro. It was written by Rick Jaffa, Amanda Silver, Elizabeth Martin, and Lauren Heinick. And I want to go ahead and say, I said this before the Parasite review, I'm going to give you the names of the actors, I'm going to butcher them, I am sorry in advance. Uh, I have an English tongue and I speak very little of any other languages and this is going to be the result. Yi Fai Lu as Mulan, Donnie Yen as Commander Tong, Li Gong as Jian Yang, Jet Li as the Emperor, Jason Scott Lee as Bori Khan, and Yosan Ang as Hong Hui. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and put the full cast list down in the show notes with their correct spellings uh, so that you can see how bad I butchered them. But uh, That'll be down in the show notes, so go ahead and check that out. So as I said in the opening, I'm not sure exactly what people were expecting. Maybe they were expecting a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the cartoon, and it's not that. There are several characters from the cartoon that are not in a live action. The story is not the same as the cartoon. The characters are very different than they were in the cartoon. And I don't know if people haven't seen the live action remakes that Disney's been doing, but other than the story and kind of the story arc and the protagonist, a lot of things change between the, the characters that we have and the story that we have in the animated versions and the live action. So when I say that the story is fundamentally the same, well, the story of Mulan is kind of the same. A young woman who is a daughter to a father with only daughters, and there is a war uh, that breaks out in her country her father cannot send any sons, and the emperor has requested that they all send male, a male from each family to serve. So instead of her elderly father going, or having the dishonor of not sending anyone, he says he's going to go. And in the middle of the night, she takes his armor, she takes his sword, and she goes off to train uh, disguising herself as a man. And then we see her kind of staying in disguise and the antics of a girl trying to pretend to be a boy amongst boys. And they eventually harden up and they sing songs and they train. And then before they're actually done training, it doesn't matter. It's time to go serve the emperor and off they go to fight. And uh, she ends up learning a lesson about uh, not having to disguise herself. Um, I've been debating whether or not to do a spoiler section. As I said, it is a bit different, and yet it's the story of Mulan, so I mean, I'm sure you kind of know where the end result is. If you've seen the 1998 animated movie, uh, I probably will do a small spoiler section just about uh, some of the things that happen towards the end that are different than the animated movie, so uh, just stick around for that. But uh, the things that are different, uh, there is no animated dragon. Uh, some of the people I was watching with were just waiting for, I think it's Mushu, the animated dragon, to pop up, and I was like, what about this would make you think there'd be an animated dragon. Uh, there is a phoenix, which is not a dragon, 
as I educated some of the people about, uh, that is more of like a symbolic thing about their family and it's not really there. It's not something that Mulan can only see. It's, it's an ideal more than it is a real thing. Also, the movie includes, uh, sorry, the live action movie, the 2020 movie, includes uh, this kind of idea of chi uh, as a, a way of saying why some people are better fighters than others. Some can harness their chi and by harnessing their chi, they uh, can feel the world around them and that helps them become better fighters. Uh, again, it, you know, I have known a lot of people who have done semi-professional or amateur fighting in my life and a lot of times what they say is, you get to the point where you're not just anticipating the next move of the person, it borders on precognition of what the person has. A friend of mine did jujitsu uh, semi-professionally uh, back in college, and he used to tell me that you know uh, the times when he got beaten and beaten badly uh, was because he just couldn't anticipate what the person was going to do. Sometimes he won quickly, and it felt as if he knew ahead of time every move that person was going to make. That is a little bit, I think, of what they were looking for with this chi, that you could feel the universe and because you see and you feel everything around you, not just the person and what they might do, but everything, other objects and other people around you, that you can use the whole world as a weapon, as well as your body and as well as whatever weapons you might have. And I will say, I don't remember a lot about the animated movie. 98 was a little late for me to really get into those Disney movies. But in the aughts, one of my roommates uh, had a child. And so I did watch a lot of Disney movies, uh, including Tangled probably about 6,000 times. So uh, I am, I've seen it in the last, I don't know, decade. It's just not there. Like all the bullet points of the movie are not there. But I do remember Mulan struggling a little bit with training, but at the same time, clearly being better than her competitors and the, or the other guys in her unit. There was something about water, about them carrying water. They do that in the live action as well. It becomes this whole thing about like, in order to really come into her own, she needs to figure out how to carry these heavy water pots up to the top of the hill. And uh, she does it before everyone else can. And of course that makes her the center of celebration. But before we wrap up, of course, you know, they have to go off to war, they're gonna go fight. And during the movie, we've seen how bad uh, these enemy fighters really are. They uh, lay waste to entire outposts, letting only one person survive to go and tell the tale of what happened. Uh, they, which uh, turns out isn't just uh, someone who escapes because they have with them a witch uh, I guess is how other people refer to it, but uh, it's another woman who is really good at harnessing her chi so much so that she can transform herself into birds or even into another person. And this allows her to go around and spy. And it's why these uh, forces are so bad because she'll get into a place and then drop the door, the gate, uh, the drawbridge and let all of the forces in so they don't have to siege anywhere. So uh, there's that which I don't remember from the original. Uh, I think it was just like uh, the Huns were the original enemy in Mulan. To defeat the Huns. And I've been doing a little dancing because I don't want to give too much away because I am going to do a spoiler section, a very short one. So um, if you want to wait around and, and hear my final thoughts, go ahead and skip down to the time down below uh, because the spoilers are going to start right here. Okay, so uh, Mulan ends up facing off against this evil witch and she's like, you have something in you, but you're hiding it. And because you're hiding it, you are never gonna have your full powers and you can't beat me without your full powers. And then she ends up getting, uh, you know, like a, a, sh a knife thrown at her like, Wah! and then uh, it hits the uh, thing. And I, we've been trying for a week since I saw it to remember what the thing is called, uh, but that she's like straps her chest down with and it hits that and it's made of leather. So it stops the knife and doesn't kill her. Uh, but it basically liberates her from having to pretend to be a boy. So, you know, she like lets her hair down and uh, sheds her father's armor and takes the sword and uh, charging back into battle. Uh, but eventually the, you know, uh, she gets back she shows that she is a she is in fact a girl, and her leader, Commander Tong, is mortified, and she has broken their three promises, and uh, she's lied to them, so uh, she needs to to be banished. But while being banished, she tra the witch tries to recruit her, and she says she wants to help out her people. And then turns out the witch used to be uh, a good person too, but then she was banished as well for like dealing with her chi and like trying to harness it. Uh, anyway, so it turns out the witch and Mulan are very much alike. 
And Mulan says, there's still a way for us to turn this into good. You just have to have the basically be forthright enough to do it. And the witch says, I'm too far gone. I can't be a good person. And Mulan says, of course, you can be a good person. So anyway, uh, Mulan goes back to her commander, tells him what's up. Uh, like, oh, hey, they have uh, they did like a little end around on you, and you think that you destroyed their army, but you didn't. And they're about to go kill the emperor, and so a small force, including Mulan, rides off because the commander is all of a sudden like, now you have value to me. So, uh, yeah, unbanished, and let's go do the thing. So they ride to Peking, the uh, capital of China, and they're going to save the emperor, but the emperor has been moved out of the palace for his own protection because, once again, the witch has made her way inside uh, and taken over the body of one of his uh, advisors, his like strongest advisor, and they, he tricks the palace guards into going in for a slaughter. It's like a whole thing. Uh, and it doesn't really matter, because in the end, uh, the emperor ends up facing off against uh, the leader, uh, Bori Khan, in one-on-one -on -one battle, and he is very old, and even though he's old, he is trying to harness his chi, and he does so, but uh, it's not enough to defeat the great Bori Khan. But, you know, who can defeat him? Ah, oh, it's Mulan, who comes to the rescue and fights this man who is twice her size, but uh, she has the power of chi on her side. And, and understanding who she is and embracing it, and, and uh, the emperor uh, honors her for it. And she ends up losing her dad's sword, and she's, like, heartbroken about it. And, oh, no, my family sword, ah! And uh, then still takes that anger out on Boy Khan, and... Uh, it's a wing. And so the emperor uh, wants to reward her, but she turns down his reward because she lied to her father and she snuck away in the night and now she needs to go make amends. And uh, there's, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll talk about the three pledges in the next part so we can bring everybody back in for that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, Mulan goes home and uh, it turns out the palace guards have been sent to follow her and they honor her with a new family sword with not only the three promises but the other promise, the new promise and uh, invite her to come back when she's ready to the palace and now she gets to have the best of both worlds. She can go and be with her, her father and, and make amends but also and make him seem like, hey, uh, maybe you're not such a horrible, dishonored person because she came back and look at her. Everybody loves her. So basically, um, yeah, I know, I'm gonna save, I'm going to save that commentary for the end. So, you know what, let's do this. Let's bring, uh, Mulan's a hero, and uh, it ends kind of like the animated one, only gets a different, takes a different way to get there. All right, let's invite everybody back in, and uh, we're gonna wrap up this review right now. So I started to wander into it in, in the uh, spoilers, and I, I didn't want to, so uh, there's a couple of things I wanna cover before I give you my overall thoughts about this. Number one, uh, there are three promises that, uh, that the army and Mulan's father and Mulan have been sworn to. Those are uh, promises that she makes to the again to everyone, but it's uh, loyal, brave, and true. Uh, and of course, she uh, when they're swearing their allegiance doesn't say the true part because she's been lying the whole time and she feels bad about that. Um, and then the, oh, at the end, uh, which is not uh, let's walk a real careful line here. So she makes someone feel as though family is just as important as being uh, loyal, brave, and true. So we add loyal, brave, true, and family to that list. Um, and I understand the adding of family to it because she does hold family close to her, but I don't really understand why. Because while a lot of people are upset about this movie for a lot of reasons, it's not controversial for the things that I'm about to tell you. It's controversial because it was shot in a part of China where they are like actively undertaking you know, genocide and human rights violations. And uh, there are, are people in concentration camps in Western China right now. And Disney was like, oh, let's go shoot there. And so because there's human rights abuses there, they don't want to go shoot. And that, you know, is terrible, and I don't want to underscore the fact that that's not good, but then I also want to say, uh, we've been shooting in Hollywood for 60 years, and uh, also here, right down the block from me, there were police officers beating protesters. Uh, I saw them like arresting very harshly people. Uh, are we not going to shoot in Minneapolis? Are we not going to shoot in Louisville? Are we not going to shoot in D.C., where uh, protests were gassed and forced out of a, a square so that there could be a, a photo op for the president? Like... We have human rights abuses here. By the way, we have concentration camps here. Look at the border. There are people in concentration camps. So you know, let ye without sin cast the first stone. Like, if you are really upset that Disney went to a place and shot a movie there and that somehow benefits that government, maybe we should think about how we are shooting movies in the United States and benefiting that government. I am 100% on board with maybe moving everything to like Canada where they're pretty good on human rights. Uh, not for native people though. They have a really terrible record with native people. 
Uh, we could go to Europe and, ooh, yep, nope, nope, not good record there either. Uh, Africa, no, uh, nope. Uh, South, of, mm, nope, nope, not there either. Uh, okay, so movie industry's over. I mean, honestly, it's, I, I don't mean to be glib about it. I, mean, I do mean to be glib about it, but, uh, you know, apologize for the glib. I don't really apologize either. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sorry if you're offended at my glibness, but the fact of the matter is the world is full of terrible things. There are some things to be upset about with this movie. I don't think where it was shot is the number one thing. If I were other people, and I'm not, I'm myself, uh, but let me tell you what I'm upset about. I am upset with the fact that Mulan's worth through this entire movie is gauged only by what she can do for other people. And although she owns her own story and she goes through this transformation of being proud of who she is and embracing it, that basically she is kind of proving herself to every man and proving her worth. And she's only worth something when she is worth something. To her father, she is only worth uh, marrying off and keeping his honor. And then she does the opposite, which is terrible and dishonors him. And to her commander, she is only worth being a man and being brave, loyal, and true and being a soldier who can go and die. And when he finds out that she's a woman and she can't actually do those things, well, you're worthless to me now, so you're banished. Uh, also, you broke one of the things, but I don't really think that's as big of a deal as you're a woman. So, But when you're a woman and you go get us intel that might help save the emperor, ooh, now you have something of value for me again. So now you have, a, you have worth again and I'm going to give you back this worth. And then, you know, the Emperor, I guess, for the for, for what it's worth, seems to take her at face value uh, and say, you know, you're worthwhile because you're worthwhile. But if she hadn't saved his life, would he, you know, if she wasn't there to help, would he feel the same way? Or would he, because it's basically his rules, right? Men only in the army and uh, women are there to be, to, uh, be married off. In fact, in his court... Uh, she's the only one who's not in like full court garb with the white face with makeup and, and the big dress. So it seems like that's his rule just spread around the country. And I assume it would be, you know, being an emperor. And then uh, her father, to whom she now has zero value because she stole his armor and his sword and rushed off and dishonored him. Well, now that she's bringing back, you know, uh, honor in a way, I almost... I mean, I am just, uh, I don't know why I did a spoiler section. I'm just stumbling all through it. But nonetheless, um, now she has value to her father. It's kind of wrapped in this thing of like, oh, I should have seen the truth long ago that you are, you're special and valuable. It, it, I don't think they ever get there. It's, it's all about like, you as a person only have value by providing value to other people. And specifically in this case, men. And I always saw Mulan, the animated version, as a tale of you know, that I would be really happy for my daughter, even though I, I don't want children, uh, my nieces, even though I only really have a nephew, uh, or, uh, you know, any young girl to see and be like, you can be strong and you can fight, you can be do everything a boy can do. And even it if it takes a little deception, you should go and do that. And then watching this, I don't know what the difference is between the animated version and maybe it's being 20 years older and uh, really questioning everything about the world. But basically, I just look at this and I say that like, you don't have to do that. Don't If they don't want you because you are different, then they are worse off for that and let, let them go do that. So that was it was really upsetting to me. And I don't know why I'm having such a visceral reaction to it. Maybe it's because everybody's upset about this. And I'm actually not that upset about this point. I'm upset that you're worried about this thing, which is very important, but also is kind of spread all around the world, including the place where we live, and you don't want to do anything about that. But you're not upset about this other thing, which is invariably just built into the story, and we could have changed within the story without changing the story, but you chose not to. Um, yeah, uh, the father loves his daughter, and he's going to love her no matter what, but really her value to him is only when what she, she can provide for him. And that's just not really cool with that. A friend of the show, uh, Flash, uh, told me one time, uh, oh, that's really funny. Uh, do you want me to ruin it with my feminism? And I feel like I may have done that for people here. But at least you're not going to be talking about, uh, you know, human rights abuses. So um, Mulan, anti-feminist movie? I would argue possibly yes. But that's just one man's opinion. Let's get back to... So I, I went a little political and I've been trying not to do that on these reviews. It just was super upsetting with me when it came to this movie. But getting to the movie itself, on face value, I actually enjoyed this movie a lot. And I've seen a lot of people doing reviews and they said, you know, oh, it's terrible and, uh, you know, it doesn't follow the animated movie, which, again, I've addressed. I don't think it should. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, it, it's a little long. Um, I think they could have moved through and wrapped things up a little faster. But 
it really, it's it's a lot of good entertainment. It's not too violent. I wouldn't necessarily show it to young kids like you would the animated one, but, you know, like older, older meaning like 9, 10 years old, totally safe for them. I think it's rated G. I just don't know that I would show my, like my little young kids it. Just wait, let them get a little older and understand it. Like you're not supposed to uh, hit people with sticks because there's a little bit of stick hitting, and I feel like a 6-year-old would just go grab a stick and whack their little brother with it or something. But, um... Other than, like, a little bit of violence like that, that's that's it. And the fact that uh, she has to hide who she is from the real world, um, that sucks, too. But it, it's enjoyable, and, you know, I, I like to think that I can pick out the acts and see how the story is moving through, and because I, I knew the kind of base story, I knew where we were going, but it it's, it's, seems to stretch out in weird places and then be very compressed in other places where you'd think you want to take more time. And um, But I'm not here to, to discuss the concept of the movie or, or whether or not it was cinematically good it was enjoyable at the end of the movie i was like oh that was that was very cute it was a cute disney movie i'm watching something on disney plus um we I, I think i've said on the on the uh the reviews before we have something called the fast and the furious rule which is going into something knowing what you're getting and did it reach its objective i went to disney plus to watch a disney movie and I have to have the expectation that I'm going to get a Disney movie. And that's exactly what I got. Given all of the things I've said, you may think I didn't enjoy it, but I, I honestly did. And uh, I was watching it with Corey, uh, the other half of the, of the Anthem podcast, and he was not happy about it. He did not like it. And I was trying to get to the heart of why. He also does movie reviews. You should check those out at Corey Baker Filmmaker. I haven't watched it yet because I didn't want to spoil my review by seeing his first and being, you know, 20 minutes of ranting about how wrong he is because he's generally wrong a lot. But I, I'm actually excited to go see what he said. I just know that he wasn't a huge fan. And for me, I was like, that's cute. Uh, yeah, uh, time spent. Um, and I think that you know, if you are in this time of like, there's not a lot of new stuff and there's been a lot of hype about Mulan, I think you can really go into it and say, was this a waste of time or not? You don't have to have this multi-layered spectrum. It really is just like disappointment, not disappointment. And for me, in a pass-fail class, Mulan passes. Not a disappointment, a good two hours spent. I got to hang out with my friends in a, and watch a movie that's not so serious that we felt it was okay to talk through. And uh, we discussed the first movie, the animated movie, and we laughed at stuff that probably wasn't meant to be funny. And we had like a little bit of discussion, but because we already knew kind of what was going on, it was easy to go through. It's an easy movie. It's something you can sit down and watch and enjoy with people and now be part of the you know cultural zeitgeist. You've seen it, everybody else has seen it, and talk about it. And if you're gonna talk about it, talk about the more important things. Not about like how it was cinematically flawed or, or where it was shot, but that maybe we're not setting a great example for young women when we establish that value is only uh, based on what you're worth to somebody. But don't let me get started again. So if you disagree with me about Mulan, as Corey clearly does, let me know. You can leave a comment down below. Hit the like or the dislike. Let me know if I'm off base here. Uh, you can also send me a message. If you're listening in the podcast version, just go to anger.fm forward slash uh, everyman movie reviews and forward slash message. You can leave me a voicemail, send me a text, and I can actually play it on one of the future programs. Thank you guys for checking out this kind of special episode. Uh, a few more of the pre-recorded ones coming up, and then, unless I see something else that's brand new, and then we'll be back to our regular schedule, two episodes per week. So make sure that you have your notifications turned on or that you subscribe to the podcast so that you get it on the day that it comes out. But until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Have a great week, everybody.